$100,000 for Bitcoin. That's your call by the end of the year. Trading right now just shy of $60,000. How does it get there? It is very likely that Bitcoin still finishes the year around $100,000 with experts calling for ETH to 4K as well. But you also have the call for uh, ETH to end the year at $4,000. And obviously a strategic Bitcoin reserve wouldn't necessarily benefit ETH. Why do you think that ETH is set for a rally here as well? And this CPI data, inflation data, may have just guaranteed it. Because uh, it's uh, the first year over year uh, being less than 3% of an mm -hmm. inflation increase, the CPI here, uh, first year over year since March of 2021. So the headline CPI was under 3%. It's 2.9%. And keep in mind, this is CPI rate, inflation rate. So inflation is only increasing by 2.9 now. So year over year, the first time that it hasn't been uh, over 3%, 3% 3 right. or higher since March of 2021, right in the heat of the pandemic. So this now almost guarantees for September, not if the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates, but how much? This number seems to move that question to what kind of rate cut mm. uh, we're going to have. Is it going to be a quarter point, which is the, the kind of normal state of affairs for the Fed to cut, or is it going to be a half point cut? Uh, and this pushes the possibility of a half point rate cut um, closer hmm. to closer to happening. There are two takeaways that matter from today's CPI data. Number one, the Fed will start cutting rates in September. And number two, three percent is the new baseline for inflation rate, not two percent. Both are bullish for Bitcoin. A half point cut um, would dramatically it would send a dramatic signal that uh, there's going to be more money fl flowing into uh, the economy, that loans are going to be easier to get, uh, and then you and then you will start to see, you know, long. You're already seeing interest rates coming down. Interestingly, over the last several months, like 30-year mortgage rates mm -hmm. coming down, this would send mortgage rates significantly down. As interest rates come down, more money can flow into the system, the stock market, the crypto market, the economy. And pay attention to the reason that this metified CEO is doubling down of Bitcoin's year end price. You know, there's a few things that we have to look at. In the previous uh, bull run, two types of buyers didn't exist that exist today, right? So you, now you have nation states possibly kicked off by uh, Trump's call for, you know, strategic Bitcoin reserve. So that sort of ramps up the buying pressure from a, a buyer with deep pockets in you know, nation states. The other thing is ETFs now, um, they're gobbling up Bitcoin whenever they dip uh, below a certain point so they can pull them and obviously have them readily available for people coming into their funds. So with those two, you know, increasing pressures upward on the, on the, you know, the price of Bitcoin and, you know, the supply being fixed, I think it's one of those things that like you just can only go in one direction, like barring some type of economic meltdown, uh, the amount of money coming into the system can only push the price up. And let me put this into perspective and simplify this more and watch today's whole video. We'll talk altcoins. But Bitcoin's price today at around $60,000 is similar. It's the exact same price as where we were back in 2021. But everything has changed. Bitcoin, in many ways, is completely de-risked. The fundamentals are so much better, even though price is similar. We're actually doing a talk on this, the greatest crypto bull run of all time at Rare Evo this weekend, following Robert F. Kennedy and Charles Hoskinson. But price is the same. How have we been de-risked? Number one, Bitcoin today and Ethereum are now regulated through these spot crypto ETFs. Charles Schwab, BlackRock, Fidelity, these institutional juggernauts are now actively offering these assets to their clients. This was not the case back in 2021. Also now, bad actors have been removed from the space. FTX used to be the second largest trading exchange by volume. Globally, they're now collapsed. Binance, the first largest crypto exchange by trading volume, has essentially been taken over by the U.S. government meaning over 50% of the trading volume for Bitcoin and crypto now flows through American exchanges. 
That just means less ambiguity. Large institutional money can now feel comfortable jumping into this asset. And now not only are the largest crypto exchanges American, over 50% of the trading volume flows through American exchanges, but also Bitcoin mining today versus mining maybe five years ago back in 2020, over 50% is done in America. Again, price is the same as four years ago, but as an asset, looking at the fundamentals, this has been completely de-risked. Another big thing was the halving. We've essentially been through double the halvings since we were only at one right after when this price hit 60K, yet the price hasn't doubled. So that's a double restriction of the supply, yet we have not seen the price impact double to match. I don't think the Metified CEO's prediction is that crazy. And just to keep it real, speed bumps in any road happen. For example, just today, the US government has moved 10,000 of their Silk Road Bitcoin worth about $593 million to Coinbase Prime, meaning they either want Coinbase to custody it or they want to sell it. That's why you move crypto to, a, to an exchange if you want to sell it. But these speed bumps do not invalidate the broader trend. Like the secret to success as a nation state is you have defensible productive property. And so the reason that the British Empire rose is they had an island and it was hard to invade it. Nobody got to it after 1066. And that, on that island, they industrialized. And then they got the, the colonies and that was defensible, productive land. And then the reason the U.S. rose to power is the United States is defended by the Pacific on one side, the Atlantic on the other side, frozen tundra to the north, a desert to the south, defensible, productive. And what we do? Well, we bought Louisiana territory. Jefferson did it for 15 million bucks and he bought 27% of the land mass. Seward bought Alaska, $7 million. The United States federal government owns 28% of the land. In the US, we own whatever, 18% of the gold or something. So scarce, desirable property, but by productive property that you can defend. And so if hundreds of trillions of dollars are migrating to cyberspace, Right. My view is Bitcoin's going to demonetize Siberian real estate and Chinese real estate and everything in Africa. And why would you want to own bonds of a South American company? Why would you want to own anything other than Bitcoin? So as the capital flows, you're going to see hundreds of trillions of dollars there. So if you're the United States, what are you worried about? Losing your world reserve currency status. Where's the money going to go? To Bitcoin. How do you hedge that? Just go to go to where everybody's going and buy 20% of it. And then when they get there, you know, you'll be fine. And this is so epic to see looking at altcoins actually implementing. It's clear that people want to play off the grid. The first blockchain game on PS5, the closed play test saw around 400,000 transactions from 30,000 players this past weekend alone. This is a real blockchain game on all PS5s now, and people don't even know it's a crypto game, but they play it and learn along the way. I would say like the reason, the, this is like my description of the game, still keeping the NDA intact, uh, is like, it's like Fortnite No Build had yeah. a baby with the kid of Apex and Warzone. That's like what I think, and that just made a beautiful masterpiece, Love Child, uh, which is off the grid. Uh, just like, yeah, the cyber limbs and all that stuff is really cool. Yeah, this is old gameplay. I will agree with Jaxie. This is old gameplay, but this is the only gameplay yeah. that I have to show. So I just wanted yeah. to show you guys. And Injective and the Telegram ecosystem. Injective is officially integrated with Ton Blockchain ecosystem and historic moment for both communities. Now Injective assets such as ING can be bridged and utilized across Ton while Ton can also be leveraged across injective dApps. So if you're bullish on the Telegram ecosystem, which I am also in the injective ecosystem, this is awesome. And as of six hours ago in MasterCard news and MetaMask, introducing the MetaMask card, the world's first Master MasterCard debit card that enables instant spending directly from your self-custody wallet. This is a huge TradFi and Web3 partnership. I mean, this is massive. Of course, this is an ongoing story. Click subscribe for daily updates. And like always, see you tomorrow.